right, welcome back to Morning Live. Uh, before you took a break, I told you about criminalizing teen sex, and of course, the Chief Justice is opposing the same. And trust me, it's not funny because as much as we're talking about consent, we also talk about age. And in studio, I'm, I'm actually joined by two gentlemen, two young lawyers, Morara Kibaso and Marco Muga, who now will be telling us more about this issue because now as far as we used to 18 and above, now there's a matter of 16 coming into play and where does the society fall into this? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. My good friends mm -hmm. are all killing, eh? the young, yeah, The young lawyers we have in this country. <laughs> now, <laughs> there's this issue about now... Um, the criminal justice system whereby now it wants to put everything out there and of course opposing these the chief justice himself came out very clearly that indeed that it 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 will be it will be an issue when now an, an under 16 is actually found indulging in this and um you 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 kind of sit down and, and wonder why are you even talking about under 16 why even having this conversation morara maybe to start with you i think uh the the issue of growth and development is a process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not uh, as justice rosaline nambuye said mm -hmm. uh, as you know it was a peer learning conference for the criminal justice system yeah. mm -hmm. um, there's a difference between the legal age and the consensual age okay and as just as judges continue to practice the law mm -hmm. and as the society continues to observe the development of law okay. it has come to the realization that nowadays children are maturing or experimenting their adolescence before the maturity age. Okay. Uh, way before they are 18 mm -hmm. and uh, at a legal age to mm -hmm. engage in uh, lawful sexual intercourse leading to either marriage or being parents. Yeah. But uh, as the Chief Justice uh, correctly pointed it out, the Sexual Offenses Act Mm -hmm. is discriminative in many ways, okay. especially against the boy child. Yeah. In fact, mm -hmm. his speech, if you watch the full, of, the full speech, mm -hmm. he was more about why is this Sexual Offenses Act so mm -hmm. discriminative yeah. on boys, yeah. so much that there are so many boys who are below the age of 18 being thrown into jail yeah. for having consensual sexual intercourse mm -hmm. with their peers who are teenage girls and those girls are not, action is not being taken upon them. Yeah. So there is a need to relook at the law, the Sexual Offences Act, so that we don't sensationalize the law. Yeah, we yeah. don't make it a matter of feeling and emotion. Yeah. We deal with it practically as per um, research-based mm -hmm. law on what is it that it is happening now yeah. and how do we ensure that we protect the future generation mm -hmm. by not throwing them into jail for offences that they yeah. conduct by merely experimenting the adolescence. All right, Mark, what's your opinion on this? Because now the boy child, as uh, Morara has mentioned, um, has been on the spot. <coughs> on indulge, uh, below 18, uh, of course, it's just a matter of just protecting the boy child also in this situation. But look at both sides. Do you feel it's wise? You just we say it as it is now. OK, to begin with, uh, the law, as justice, uh, the Chief Justice put it, where it's uh, defilement essentially is uh -huh. an act and like a lawful act uh -huh. that causes penetration of a child. Uh -huh. So, to the extent that minors can engage in um, sexual activity, uh -huh. then they, they, they can be found guilty of defiling one another. Uh -huh. I do not uh, certainly agree with uh, my learned colleague that the pro that particular provision of the Sexual Offences Act is uh, discriminatory against uh, boys or the male child. Uh -huh. Uh, there, was a, there was a case between, before Justice Ocheng, uh -huh. CKW versus the AG. It was a petition that sought to uh, invalidate the constitutional validity of Section 8.1 okay. and Section 11 uh -huh. of the Sexual Offences Act that deal, deal with defilement uh -huh. and uh, it disattacked attack to the child. So the issue was that uh, the petitioner was found to have uh, committed defilement. He was 16 okay. and had a girlfriend who was 16. Mm -hmm. So he was the one who was arrested and the girl became the prosecution yeah. witness number yeah. one, mm -hmm. the complainant. So uh, Justice Ocheng in that decision said that it is not the, the particular provision of the law that is discriminatory. It is the application of that provision. Okay. So that essentially when children are found to have engaged in uh, sexual intercourse, then both should be charged. Uh -huh. It is not only, 
it, the problem is that there's a, a, there's a discriminatory application of the law. It is not the law itself that is discriminatory. Okay. Yes. Very interesting. Now, listen to this. Um, <clears throat> the proposal was intended to clarify uh, principles of law to incorporate values and principles as enshrined in the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Now, FIDA has noted or had noted the problematic Section 8 of the Sexual Offences Act which criminalizes sex among teenagers and had proposed that the section be amended. The Romeo and Juliet right so as to reduce the number of teenage boys going to jail. Now, looking at this, it's mentioned um, as applied by the law, but it, it's clear more teenage boys are actually in prison right now, but the law is changing now. The law might be changing, of course. Is it fair to say that, um, of course, as a girl, you always see them as victims. Okay, it, 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 that's the notion, that's the society, actually. When you forcefully, or maybe there's consent, there's a problem. Now, Morara, um, for the guys who are in prison who are maybe under 16, under uh, 15 maybe, the, the, they forcefully um, did this, do you think um, even there's a campaign about the presidential pardon, maybe that it can come and actually wipe them out of these prisons? There's a... Um, first, let me, before I respond to your yeah, query, yeah. let me respond to what my learned colleague I know, said. I know learned friends will have to respond to each other. Yes, so, yeah, I yeah. have to respond. <laughs> yeah. he, he put it that uh, it is the application of the law mm -hmm. that is being discriminative rather than the law. Mm -hmm. uh, which means in his view, the law is fine. It is how we are applying the law. Mm -hmm. uh, which could be partly true and partly false. If you look at the Sexual Offences Act yeah. and how it was conceptualized and came to be, yeah. this law was brought in by Honorable Justice uh, Njo Kindungu okay. when she was a nominated yes. uh, member of parliament. parliament. And the Sexual Offences Act, in my view, from the moment when it was conceptualized, it was not geared against women. It was geared against men. Hmm. To the extent that even how they defined rape, if you look at it very keenly, you'll find that it is only a man that is capable of committing rape. Because yeah. when you define rape as penetration of genitalia, mm -hmm. who is capable of penetrating the other? It is the man that is capable of penetrating the lady. The lady is not capable of penetrating the man. She's only capable of inducing the man to be forcefully <laughs> penetrated. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a quite very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. But now, look at this situation. Uh, sorry I'm cutting you short, yes. but you'll continue with this. Um, this is still your question. Huh? Yes. As, uh, I'll come to Omoga later on. Now, um, forcefully yes. penetrating. Yes. Um, um, maybe you're trying to say uh, the, the, the young girl is on the receiving end. Now, uh, when there's consent... When there's consent. Yes. Yes. Now, how will it be termed? Because now, um, we leave the word forcefully, but there's consent now where she has accepted. Now, where there's consensual intercourse, uh -huh. we have to differentiate. There's consensual intercourse between two adults, mm -hmm. all above the age of 18. But these are? That is legal. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Then there is consensual intercourse between two minors. Mm -hmm which is what we are talking about. Yes. It's a gray area exactly. in the law. Absolutely. Uh, and it has been left to judges to apply. Mm -hmm. But as it is being applied now, it is discriminative against the boys to the extent that okay. if two minors were to have sex who are below the age of 18, mm -hmm. the boy would be arrested and charged for the offense. Okay. Then there is consensual intercourse between a minor and an adult. Okay. Now, between a minor and an adult, it's obviously defilement because that's where sexual predation comes in. That's yeah. a sexual predator. <coughs> Somebody who is at the age of maturity, 20, yeah. Yeah. 40, 50, mm -hmm. taking advantage of a child. Sure. That is completely criminal. Mm -hmm. But the issue that we are dealing with now is we have two children. These two children have decided to experiment their adolescence because even now, if you do research, and I saw in the news recently, there was a research that was done by a, a, a non-governmental organization okay. on how many children have at least engaged in sex, mm -hmm. even in high school level. 75%. They've already engaged in sex. They know about sex. <laughs> they, is looking somewhere else. They, are, you, are you in agreement with that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they okay. have engaged in sex. So if 75% of our youth as at uh, the age of high school have already engaged in sex, do we throw in jail all of them for defilement? Good question, by the way. Um, he answered you over there, but uh, looking at this Omuga, um, uh, it's, it's, it's clear that now the CJ wants this to be criminalized. Like, uh, to, to actually put these people uh, at the same level, protecting the boy child, of course, now putting also uh, the girl child on the, on the, on the sport. Now, l looking at this situation, do you think also there's a, there's a backlog that trickles down to our society now as far as even our parents are concerned? Because now, it starts from home. It starts from home now. Look, look now, the law is taking its course, but it starts from home. What's your opinion now? You know, <coughs> a few issues have arisen. Uh, let me just respond to them a bit. Uh, f first of all, I, I am in agreement that there are certain uh, problematic uh, sections of the Sexual Offences Act that mm -hmm. uh, did redress. Mm -hmm. uh, I, am, I do not refuse that there are certain provisions that actually need to be looked at. But look at this. Uh, okay, let me deal with the rape. Okay. Uh, the offence is an act that causes penetration, a uh, forceful act yeah. that causes penetration. penetration without. With, listen, it's okay. not penetration of, uh -huh. it's pre with. penetration with. with. Uh -huh. So I, I do not think to that extent that it matters who is being penetrated. Okay. It's, it's an act that causes penetration. If it, it, the minor is involved in, in the act that causes penetration, or it's a forceful act that, that causes penetration, mm -hmm. then it is penetration with. It does not matter who is being penetrated. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other issue that uh, when you ask the question of uh, Romeo and Juliet laws, mm -hmm. Yes, I, I do agree that this is something that th there's, an, there's usually an exception. For example, if you look at the certain states within the United States, they have this Romeo and Juliet laws mm -hmm. so that if uh, minors engage in uh, sexual consent, in consensual sex, and then uh, they are close in age, okay. then there's an, ex an exception that can be applied to them. It's called uh, colloquially known as Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. so that they cannot be found uh, guilty of having engaged in defilement and mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other issue that now we are talking about is um, now the, the, the problem of children engaging in, in sex, uh, say consensually, even though the law says that they are not capable of giving consent. I, I, I do not agree that uh, it is not in the law. It is in the law that this is illegal. It is not something that the Chief Justice wants to introduce mm -hmm. to be illegalized. Yeah. It is actually there under Section 8.1 of the Sexual Offences Act. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and the provision does not say that it is only the boy who needs, who, who has to be, who, who should be prosecuted mm -hmm. for having engaged in defilement. Mm -hmm. It is both. The problem is that when a lot of these issues, when they happen, then it is the parents of the girl that report the boy that this person has defiled this girl. Okay. But in actual sense, if we were to look at the true sense, the true nature of the application of this provision, then both children should be prosecuted for defilement. So it's just being enforced. Yes. So it's been there. Now, um, very nice uh, angle over there that uh, m most, most, most of the times, um, the girl's parents report the boy to the authorities. Now, which is very unfortunate. Of course, the boy can't report himself for the boy's parents. They, maybe they don't know what's happening. Now, the girl will go report. Now, when the girl goes to report when there's, where there's consent, or maybe, um, <clears throat> It's an example. Uh, the parents realize something weird with their daughter. They say, Kuja Paivi. Some examination, physical examination, something happened. Now they can't uh, drill her. What happened? Now she comes out to say what happened. Now, when she comes out, there's some gaps. Uh, when, when now the, the truthfulness comes out, there's some gap as far as now how the girl has actually disseminated the information. Now they go straight to the authorities. The boy child is actually surprised. And when she, when he, maybe when he tried to say, hey, we did this knowing that it was happening, now the law is on him. Do you think there'll be this protection whereby uh, we have talked about this, we're exhausting this actually, these young people have done it. Now, protection of the boy child. How will he protect himself? How will the boy child's parents protect this guy, this young man from such situations? Uh, the law in my view, the law should respond to our society and our culture. And uh, what I've realized from what my learned friend said is that the law does not uh, reflect what our culture is mm -hmm. because the African culture is to the extent that we protect women against men. 
yes, uh, in so much that even when women are the ones that offend men, yeah. it is still the men mm -hmm. that are castigated for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So to this extent, mm -hmm. you would not expect a boy or rather a boy's parents to go to report that their boy has been defiled yeah. by the girl. Yeah. First, it is a, in the African culture, it mm -hmm. is a show of weakness. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's many unwritten and unsaid things. Yeah. But uh, a girl, once she's uh, defiled, there will be that rush to bring this uh, boy to justice. Mm -hmm. So that is why I think what would be wise, in my view, mm -hmm. would be to decriminalize teenage uh, sexual intercourse between okay. teenagers okay. Uh, where there is we adopt the US system where by the gap between them is reasonable okay. for example 16 and 17 mm -hmm. 15 and 16 in so much that we don't have a 17 year old boy defiling an 8 year old girl yeah. so that we just have that small gap mm -hmm. so that or mm -hmm. that judges are given the discretion in fact what justice Rosalind Nambuye was proposing is that let judges be given discretion, discretion. let them deal with it on a case to case basis sure. so that as it comes before them they are not tied by the law to jail somebody for 20 years to yeah. jail somebody for 30 years they mm -hmm. have the discretion to acquit mm -hmm. to jail to put an uncustodial sentence to do yeah. this or to do that. Yeah. There is something I want to weigh in on because it also has an angle on what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And that is on the reduction of the minimum age. There was that debate okay. about the reduction of the minimum age for consent of sex from 18 mm -hmm. to 16. Maybe just hold it right there. We just take a breath a little bit. Now okay. when you come back, we'll proceed with that. Okay. We're taking a break right in morning live. When you come back now, Morale will continue with, of course, what he was talking about because now the concessional age. And, of course, I'll still have to grill uh, John Marco Muga here, Marco Muga here, but just about, um, you know, Mark is trying to really put this thing out here as far as the law is concerned. But after the break, we'll try to grill him, push him to the walls and ask him some very tough questions about the Sexual Offices Act. All are coming to you after a short break. morning live and right now of course our sign language interpreter is Teresi Oshira and uh, I'm joined by Kibiso, Kibaso Morara and uh, Mark uh, Umuga who are in studio to talk about now this uh, controversial, not controversial actually, the grey area of the Sexual Offences Act in Kenya and trust me even during the break they're trying to kind of push each other, the learned friends as usual trying to kind of prove each other you're wrong, you're right but still now for the sake of Kenyans who are watching right now we want to make this thing very clear. Because uh, there's some issues whereby, you know, judgment, I I'll tell you the truth, and this is a fact, that a j the same case, a judgment in Kisi won't be the same judgment in Nyeri. Now, these things sometimes come from the judges who are actually now um, um, maybe giving these um, ultimatums or consensus about the case. Now, Omuga, um, before you continue your point which you're actually addressing, um, the issue of... Um, differences in uh, giving out these judgments, it's kind of also a problem because now Judge X will give his or her own situation, Judge Y will do the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, uh, there's a concept known as stare decisis mm -hmm. where lower courts are bound by the decisions of the higher court. Okay. So that helps to regulate some decisions. Uh, and now there comes a problem where you know, courts of the same status are not bound by the, the, the decisions of one another. Yeah. So that the high court, in uh, say in Malind, is not bound by the, uh, another decision made mm -hmm. in uh, Nairobi. But that decision is persuasive. Mm -hmm. So that they can uh, li look at the decision, see whether it makes sense, and see whether they can adopt it. Okay. So while they are not bound, they can actually be persuaded by that decision. And uh, of course, judges also have discretion that if... the circumstances and facts of a particular case differ substantially from the facts and circumstances of another case, then they have the discretion to make their own decisions based on the circumstances of that particular case. Okay. So yes, there is the case of 
there's in jurisprudence there's something called uh, legal realism where uh, while we expect that there's there's some certainty with the decision making so that when you look at the part facts of a particular case you can determine this is how the court is going to decide but legal realism comes in where certain facts that are not uh, uh, that come uh, come later uh, emerge from the case uh, go on to make uh, to make the judge de decide differently okay yes very interesting now look uh, the, the judicial system has so much and you're the custodians of this law you know very well how the law uh, the law acts you represent so many people in the corridors of justice but more are you expounding on something because as much as now we want to also know that, uh, kind of get the clarity of this matter the gray areas basically you're saying something sure. I was saying something about the minimum age mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to weigh in on the debate on the minimum age because it also has an angle and a bearing okay. towards what we are discussing because mm -hmm. if we are discussing sexual intercourse between minors yeah then let's also discuss the debate that there has been about the decrease of the minimum age from 18 to 16. 16. I, I, I thought about it and uh, in my view, what needs to be done is to decriminalize sexual intercourse between minors of close age uh, gap. Okay. But we cannot reduce the minimum age for sexual consent because if we do, then we need to decrease the minimum age for everything. Because okay. if you decrease the minimum age, say from 18 to 16, you say now people who are in 16 can have sexual intercourse yeah. and the product of sexual intercourse is children yeah so it means children who are at 16 can be legal parents yeah now how can they be parents if the age for them to get an id mm -hmm. which enables them to get a job okay. is 18. Mm -hmm. then you have to decrease also the, the the legal age to 16 so that they get an id at 16 mm -hmm. so that at 16 they can get a job okay for them to be able to be to be responsible parents okay. so that at 16 they can open a bank account at 16 they can drive uh, at 16 they can buy a house at 16 they can get in business at 16 they can get a business license so you'd have to decrease the minimum age not just for sex but for everything okay you'll have to decrease the legal age so that could not be the solution to our problem okay the solution to our problem is is actually the romeo and juliet uh, mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. which if persons who are adolescents are experimenting their adolescence, huh, they, c they should be given that, uh, that reprieve okay. so they don't get thrown in jail for, for, for merely experimenting okay. the, what it is that they have inside of them because they, have that, they are still developing sexually yeah. in terms of the mind and in terms of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, alternatively, could give judges dic discretion okay. so that they have the freedom to deal with this case on a need-to-need -need basis. Okay. So that as the case comes, depending on the facts and circumstances of that case, mm -hmm. a judge would decide this way and that okay. way. Okay, all right. Umuga, from 18 to 16, he's mentioned so many things, of course, and yeah. given a green light to, to do so many things, transactions. You can, of course, uh, branding has to change. Um, 18 and above will now be a thing of the past. 16 and above now will be the, the end thing. Now look at the um, uh, the consequences because now, as much as you're saying, at 16 they're still developing. There's some consequences. Now um, y you know very well that um, we, we there's a process in terms of uh, so, so some people say, of course, we like to say trust the process whereby even rate of success you need to kind of grow a little bit for you to know to have the experience and everything now do you think uh, this uh, 16 year olds will be thrown to the deepest end with this with this loop okay now to begin with <coughs> this issue of 16 recently came about uh, out of a court of appeal decision in uh, Elio Duaweru uh, against the Republic where uh, it was said in the media that uh, the Court of Appeal had proposed that the age of consent be reduced to 16. If you look at that decision, the Court of Appeal did not actually say that. It did not actually even propose a particular age. The Court of Appeal invited uh, the public to participate in the reform of policy and uh, the law with regards to the age of consent and then give the example of certain jurisdictions where the minimum age, for example, it, it gave the uh, example of UK, the minimum age is 16, and uh, South Africa, where oh, it is 15. So it is out, out of there that it was picked and said that the Court of Appeal actually proposed. It did not propose a particular age, okay. if you read that, that decision. 
Now, I am in total agreement that uh, there is a, ne a, a need to look at uh, the issue of uh, Romeo and Juliet laws uh, so that minors who engage in uh, consensual sex should not be penalized to the same extent as adults who engage in uh, sex with minors. Okay. But of course, there should be a way of balancing the application of this so that it is not seen that the society now uh, accepts or gives a carte blanche for minors to engage in sex because these are minors that still need to be protected. With regards to the reduction of the age of consent, I do not want to give hard and fast answers because there are certain there are good arguments on both sides with maintaining it at 18 and reducing it to a certain level, maybe 16 or whichever way. But what, what is necessary is that the society needs to look at this problem very critically. If you look at, uh, say, reducing it to age 16, mm -hmm. this is a, a, a someone who is still a child, yes? Yeah, yeah. This is a child. And uh, yes, the, the Court of Appeal said that, you know, the law should, be, should not be so rigid as to ignore the, 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 the circumstances of the day. Okay. So that if you look at this, a, a child who was uh, sexually active, uh, he's read, reached the age of, uh, age of, age of discretion. Okay. Not exactly the age of maturity, but mm. he has reached the age of discretion. Mm. But there's still the responsibility of the society to protect the child. Yeah. Yeah, because you, don't, you do not let a child engage in bad behavior simply because it is what is prevalent. Mm. If it becomes an Instagram f uh, uh, fad today that mm. uh, teenagers want to jump from building to building because mm. it's, the, it's the in thing, yeah. do not allow them to do that because we inherently know, we know better that mm. that is a dangerous thing to do. Mm. You do not say that, okay, because teenagers want to do it and so many of them want to do it, let, the, let us just allow them to engage in that. Yeah. But on the other hand, you look at uh, the, the, the problem that now the Court of Appeal was raising that a lot of young men are languishing in prisons yeah. because of this. Look at that. There's a particular case that raised an, an issue in 2013 of Martin Charo against the Republic that concerned a 13-year-old mm -hmm. who would habitually visit uh, her 23-year-old boyfriend mm -hmm. for the sole purpose of having sex and then going back to her father's house. Mm -hmm. So Justice Chitamba really struggled with that, uh, with making that decision, mm -hmm. because and in, at the, in the end he says that this was a child, a young woman who was behaving like an adult. <laughs> so it would not be fair to look at this particular uh, <laughs> person guys. as a child. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. No. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, what? A thirteen-year-old. Uh, then, like, then it became guys. the it became the law. So that <laughs> to the extent that if you wow, behave wow, and wow, conduct wow, yourself wow. as an adult, <laughs> you might actually be treated as an adult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look at and and that is it is it's uh, it's actually in the law. If you look at uh, section eight five of the Sexual Offences Act, it deals with uh, circumstances where a child deceives an adult that she is she has reached the age of eighteen. So Justice Chitembo was looking at this. You know, even in cross-examination, this child was asked, okay, so why did you, why did you go to the uh, appellant's, it was an appeal, to the mm -hmm. appellant's house? Mm -hmm. And she said, I went for the sole purpose of having sex. Mm -hmm. She stayed there for three days, mm -hmm. having sex throughout the three days, and went back to her father's house mm -hmm. and reported where she had been during those three days. And just remember, look at this. This is a child who is acting like an adult. It would not be fair to deal with this child as a, as a child. I still don't agree with that anyway. But, but, but the there, is a pro there is another problem. Okay. The, the issue of coaching of yeah. witnesses. Because whenever such things happen, there is always the coaching of girls okay. to go and testify in a particular uh -huh. way against yeah. the boy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is where I have a problem with the common law system that we have. Because yeah. the common law system leaves it to the parties coming before uh -huh. court mm -hmm. to present their own case. Sure. But in uh, the inquisitorial system, the U.S. system is an inquisitorial mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Ours is an accusatorial mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. In the inquisitorial system, the civil law system like the U.S., mm -hmm. the judge tries to get into the truth of the matter. So the judge inquires. In fact, what the judge does is he sits on inquiry of the case to the extent that the, the chances of finding out the truth are high. In this case, a judge just sits and records what the party uh -huh, says. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And based on what the parties have said, uh -huh. tries to find the truth. Okay. So to the extent that a person would come to court and okay. give false testimony okay. against another person, okay. and it would not be easy uh -huh. to detect that false testimony. Wow. So there are very many girls who are being forced <coughs> by their parents. Uh -huh. 
Useme hivi. Okay. Useme hivi. Okay. So that issue of Useme hivi, they end up putting a boy behind bars for 20 years. Somebody was just at the age of 17, leaving jail at 37 when they is chilling again as a dollar. <laughs> 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 That's that example. There is a need to protect the boy child okay. in a very serious way. Okay. Omuga, uh, this is so interesting and I feel like the law is kind of unfair also. Sometimes, I'll have to distance myself, sometimes. But look at this situation. Do they need now to behave like kids? Because now, look, like the judgmental decisions here... Uh, basically, the 13-year-old was told um, there's no case here because she was behaving like an adult. Now, going, actually vanishing from his father for three days for the purposes of sex with an armed man who's 23 years old, older than her, for by so many years, behaving like an adult. Like, look at the law. Goodness. Is it even fair? Okay. Uh, I've been trying not to put this uh, in the nature of uh, a case against girls, ag girls versus boys. Yeah. Uh, it's not a case of girls versus boys. I do not think it is. And I do not think it should be framed as such. Yeah. Uh, what there is is a, is a legal and policy uh, problem that needs to be looked at mm -hmm. by the society as a whole. Because uh, there are questions that arise mm -hmm. uh, regarding the age of consent. Okay. Oh, yes. There's, there's something that I, I just be, before I come back sure, to your direct sure. question uh, that my learned friend raised that if you are going to reduce the age of consent mm -hmm. for sex, okay. then you go, have to look at other related All provisions. Other yes, provisions, yeah. like uh, a consent for to antiretroviral therapy, mm -hmm. consent to antenatal care, mm -hmm. consent to mm -hmm. pre and post. Uh, post-exposure post prophylaxis. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to allow, for example, um, contraceptives to be distributed to minors? For example, mm -hmm. you have to look at this, so that if you allow them to have sex, yeah. you also need to allow all the other, other things. So these are just uh, things that need to be looked at uh, in a very deep sense. Okay. Now, uh, to come back to your direct question, Yes, it may appear that there is there sometimes this uh, discrimination uh, with regards to the application of the law. But I do not think that the law itself is discriminatory. This was extensively dealt with, if you read that decision of uh, Justice uh, Ocheng, the Fred Ocheng, okay. in that decision of CKW versus uh, the AG, it was a petition that sought to invalidate that particular section of the law. Mm -hmm. There's no discrimination. The discrimination comes in with the application of the law. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Gentlemen. But there's something I'd like to bring yeah. up just okay. before you, you, up, you talk about gentlemen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> as you're winding up, actually. Yeah. My learned friend is trying to say something. Okay. He's trying to say the law is fine. Okay. We are applying the law uh, badly. And this is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. The law is not fine. Because if we are not applying it the right way, mm -hmm. it is because it is not responding mm -hmm. to our daily lives and culture and the way we live our lives. Yeah. So we should reform this law. Okay. Man, it was not man made for the law, but okay. the law made for the man. So if the law was made yeah. for the man, the law should be changed to suit the life yes. of the Lamed man. Friend. Yeah, I, I just allow me to respond to that. <laughs> 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 there, there, are, there are two... There are, okay, I do not want to conflate two areas of the law that you are talking about. Uh -huh. I'm talking about two things. Age of consent and the, the, the particular section 8 that deals with defilement. Yeah. As far as defilement goes and the application of defilement between boys and girls who are minors and engage in consensual sex, mm -hmm. I think the law is fine. Mm -hmm. With regards to the age of consent, yeah, mm -hmm. this is where I'm, I'm not saying that the law is fine with regards to the age of consent. Yeah. Out of the, the current practice, because, okay, the law, if you look at uh, the so social foundations of mm -hmm. law, mm -hmm. the law is supposed to serve the needs of the society. So if it is no longer serving the needs of the society, it needs to be looked at. But perhaps to, re to look at it is not exactly to reduce the age of consent. Okay. Perhaps it's to deal with it in the nature, the way you are proposing, that we need to perhaps uh, engage Romeo and Juliet clauses in the law. Yeah, yeah. And while engaging Romeo and, and, and Juliet clauses, it should not be seen that the society now condones a reckless abandonment of safety precautions yeah. within the engagement yeah. of sex mm -hmm. between minors. Okay. I'm saying that that can be looked at. Okay. Yes. And there is also a need to introduce <laughs> sexual education. I understand to we can't exhaust this way. Because <laughs> if they are engaging in sex, they will yeah. not engage in sex sure. in public. Okay. They will engage in sex in, in secret. Yeah. Sure. So if parents uh -huh. and educators in school and uh -huh. what uh -huh. do not talk to their children about uh, sexual education, okay. how to have safe sex, uh -huh. how to have 
avoid teenage pregnancy, mm -hmm. why they should avoid teenage pregnancy. So mm -hmm. there is a need okay. in the, that life skills to introduce mm -hmm. sexual education. Thank you so much, gentlemen, yes. learned friends, for coming to the studio today. Uh, young lawyers, trust me, this has been a very interesting conversation. Omuga, thank you so much. Kibas Morana, thank you so much for coming. Just hold it right there. And of course, very soon we'll call you again because now this is a developing story, actually. So we'll be following up very closely and you still have to come back here. Thank you so much for coming.